It's God Calling. In my monthly explaining of these devotionals and why I picked these books for devotionals, with God Calling it was interesting because I, as a young man, when I first got saved, I was, oh gosh, I think I was 18, and uh, I'd never been in a Christian bookstore. I hadn't been in church, so <laughs> I don't even know what a Christian bookstore would have been like. So I hadn't been in a Christian bookstore. I hadn't been raised in the church. I didn't know what what uh, really anything from anything was at first. And because of such a miraculous and phenomenal, you know, overwhelming salvation experience from my days at Calvary Chapel Riverside that later became Harvest and with Greg and then spending the years at Calvary Chapel Costa Mesa, you know, I saw and I experienced during the heyday of the Jesus movement the contra, what we used to call counterculture Christian religious idea of making this whole Christian this, Christian that, and Christian everything that I was nervous because my first attitude when I got saved was one of caring for and wanting everyone, whether they be Catholic, Protestant, Methodist, whatever religious, but just everyone to be born again and to know Jesus like I did. <laughs> I was pretty naive in those days, and I just figured everybody would want it once they knew what it was, you know. <laughs> and maybe I'm still naive, I don't know. But, uh, or not so naive as much as I am well-schooled in the Word and recognizing that God does have His purpose for all the body of Christ. And in those days, though, I was fascinated by Christian bookstores because I would walk into them and I would look around and think, wow, imagine, because I used to, when I was a kid, read in libraries and I would read out a library. I would go into like my high school library and read the entire library because <laughs> I was a wallflower and one of those ugly ducklings that the only thing I could do was simply work in libraries and read because I didn't have really any girlfriends or, you know, have much of an activity life, which nowadays people find very interesting. <laughs> it's like, you? Are you kidding? It's like, no, I was an ugly duckling. And I know what it's like, you know, to earn your wings, so to speak, and start to fly. But in those days, when I walked into a Christian bookstore, I was fascinated, but at the same time, I had someone around that was called Keith Green that used to warn us of getting into too much of this things that cause division. So I was nervous. So I used to talk to God and say, well, God, don't give me anything I don't need. Just give me what I do need. And at one point in my life, I had figured out that, you know, the circumstances, although this is more circumstantial Christianity than it is actual, you know, develop of a relationship, but people start that way. But in circumstantial Christianity is a place where people say that doors open or coincidences are God's hand moving, which it is. And that is called circumstantial evidentiary of God manipulating the circumstances of your life to prove or to demonstrate His will according to something that He's told you. For instance, like if you said, well, you know, God, I'm not getting out of bed until, you know, hell freezes over, so to speak, and there was an earthquake and it threw you out of bed, that would be a circumstance that would say, you're supposed to get out of bed. <laughs> Now, obviously, that's a pretty dramatic or extreme example, but the reality is is that you probably shouldn't get out of bed until you wake up, thank God for a living, and being alive one more day, and then ask Him if He wants you to. But in circumstantial Christianity, a lot of people use the circumstances to lay out fleeces that they call, um, based upon Gideon's idea of the fleece that was laid out and then he said well God if it's you let it be water on the fleece and then the next day if it's you let it not be water and yada yada and in that you were guided by a certain amount of realization that your faith is being exercised but it's still circumstantial now as a baby Christian when I first wanted to decide if some devotional was a good one I would say well God you know I can't I can't tell I can't tell if it's good for me or if it's bad for me. I don't really know. I know that how I feel, but my faith fact feeling choo-choo train, <laughs> in those days we had these trains that said faith fact feeling, 
says that, you know, um, I ought to find the facts, you know. So what I would do is I would go in and I would pick up a book that, first of all, caught my attention. Then second of all, I'd say a prayer over it. I'd say, Lord, if you're speaking to me and this is a good devotional, then speak to me. You know, let it fit my circumstances today as I am and as you are God, then it will fit because only God could do something like that. And that's how God Calling came about, was that one day I picked one up and flipped it open and went straight to the day. <laughs> and if I remember right, I don't remember which day it was, but I think it said, I am your Lord and I am your God and I will speak to you in a still small voice and it blew my mind. I was like, whoa, you know, and I was so excited that, you know, I, I went out and worked my tail end off to try to come up with I guess it must have been in those days, maybe three bucks or maybe four bucks, and actually purchased my first brand new book, which was called God Calling. From then on, I only bought at used stores because I wore that first one out in no time. Now, some people think it's controversial, and who knows, maybe it is, but my policy is that whatsoever the Lord's telling you to do, that you should do. So if it fits for you, then God is speaking to you. <laughs> if it doesn't, toss it out. No big deal. In God Calling, in these devotionals, all eight of them, in this one, my secret, you are being guided, but remember that I said, I will guide thee with my eyes, and my eye is my said purpose, my will. To guide with my will is to bring all your desires into oneness with my will and my desires. To make my will your only will, then my will guides you. You know, and that's cute <laughs> it fits you know we always say as a token gesture at the end of prayer sometimes nevertheless not my will but thy will be done well jesus only meant that he knew what god's will was he was born for that purpose he was designed and created a body that would be fit for him so that he could come to the earth and go straight to the cross but if there was anything else that could possibly occur that's why he added to his father, trusting him that knew all things, that if there was any other way that that cup should pass him, he said, nevertheless, nevertheless, not my will, but thy will be done. And that was right in his setting, but sometimes we as Christians, or we as those who have a personal relationship with God, if it so be that we are talking to God and he's speaking to us, we compromise in some ways by saying, well, not my will, but thy will be done. Well, no, why don't you ask what his will is first before you have to add that later? Because you don't have to. You can find out what his will is by asking him and then doing his will as Jesus said. Jesus said before dawn he got up every day and only did those things that he saw his father in heaven doing. That's the first thing he said, that he saw. The second thing is, is that if you notice, he was spending time with the father in a relationship, in a conversation. He was getting to know what his day was going to be, and he was prepared for it. There wasn't any circumstance that surprised him, and yet he was the son of man, so he was dependent upon that with which his father gave him, and the Holy Spirit inspired him at the moment, as he told us, not to think ahead of time what you should say. So, God wants to meet with you and me each and every day to spend time to prepare us for our day. Now. Maybe you'll do that at noon, maybe you'll do that at night, maybe you'll do that through the day, and maybe you'll make it right somehow. But the benefit to you is by trying it to see if it works. So if God is choosing to lead you in a direction, and the scriptures fit that perspective, and you apply your faith to it by looking at it and saying, well, there's nothing contradictory to my faith and my my." religious ideas or religion that I'm in or church or whatever it may be or the people that I'm associating with then I'll ask God and maybe I'll spend time with him and guess what that's what Christianity is all about having a personal relationship not only with Jesus but with God your father so if it so be that that inspires you as it has me then maybe you'll find a devotional or you'll read your Bible in the morning and he'll speak to you through the scripture. And then through the day, the circumstances of your life will fit into whatever it is that he's prepared you for that day.
I think. <laughs> That's what makes being a Christian real. That's what makes it so alive. It's not about the feelings you get because you're with a bunch of people that are hyped up in feeling. But it's the reality of knowing God personally where you can say, yes, I hear God speak, and he speaks to me. Isn't that what you want?